It can be really disappointing to finish needle felting an animal only to realise that you've felted the head the wrong size and shape. These five tips on shaping will help you get your needle felted animal or person the shape and size you want it to be, including a really useful technique for making sure your scale and proportions are accurate. My first tip is to have at least one image of the animal from the side and one image from the front so that you can refer to its shape, but look at more images of the animal if you can. As an experiment, I tried to make a beetle without looking at an image while making him, and well, let's say he's unique. Because I didn't have an image to hand to refer to, this dog's proportions are all wrong. Instead, I'd recommend that you print out an image the same size as you want your finished needle felted item. This will make it easier. However, I'll show you how to get the proportions right no matter what size your image is later on in the video. Even if you're needle felting a cartoon style animal, I always draw the size and proportions first, like I did before needle felting the rabbit. Then we're going to use this image to help estimate how much wool you'll need. Let's say we're making the cylinder or torpedo shape for the body of the animal. Roll up the core wool as tightly as you can, then compare this rolled wool to your image. It should be about a third larger than the picture. You mainly look and see if there's too much wool as it's not so easy to make the shape smaller, but you can easily add more wool later to make the shape bigger. To demonstrate this, imagine you're trying to shape a piece of clay with a thin stick, or rather the end of a pencil. So this thin stick that represents your needle is all you're allowed to use to shape this blob of clay into a cylinder. If I try to shape it into a cylinder from this flat clump, it would take a long time, so I've rolled up the clay so it'll take a lot less stabbing. This is exactly the same with wool. Don't forget to keep referring to your printed image to check your cylinder is going to be the right size. Here you can see that the width is okay but it's a bit longer than the image. So notice how I'm angling my needle inwards from the ends. This will shorten the length and compress the cylinder. Now you can see it's much nearer to the length of the body. Now to form the cylinder, imagine each time you stab the wool, you're pushing the wool into the shape you need it to be. Always stabbing at 90 degrees angle to the shape surface you're trying to create. Can you see how I'm changing the angle of my needle as I work round the ends of the cylinder and looking for any lumps and bumps that need prodding down? You would use the same principles whatever shape you're making. If you wanted to make a cube for example, you would stab 90 degrees to the surface downwards across the top, turn the wool 90 degrees and again stab straight down, rotating the wool at 90 degrees each time to form all six sides of the cube. So I've shown you how you can make a cylinder in a cube, but this tip will help your needle felt any shape you can imagine. Let's say you want to make a cone shape, maybe for a nose on an animal. The first thing you want to think about is how you're going to lay out your core wool in such a way that when it rolls up it will be at roughly the same shape as you need. So here you can see with the clay I've created a triangle shape making sure it's an even thickness. I've done exactly the same with the wool and I'm going to roll this wool straight upwards. The triangle shape gives the left hand side which will be the base of the cone more wool than the top which will make it much easier to get it into a cone shape. Notice I'm stabbing at 90 degrees to the surface of the cone into the center to help create that slope. So another example would be if you were making the dog's leg you'd need a long thin cylinder so lay out your wool in a long thin strip so that it's not too thick but again check the length against the picture. If you want to needle felt a ball I have a video showing you step by step how to make one. I'll put a link in the description below. You might feel a bit overwhelmed when it comes to looking at a complicated animal shape such as a dog's head. This tip will help you simplify it and work out how to needle felt the right shape. Using your two images of the animal from the front and the side, get some tracing paper and trace around the shape of the dog's head on both images. To start with we'll look at the tracing of the animal's head from the side view. So now you're going to figure out what basic shapes can make up the head. So for this beagle it might be an oval ball shape and a shaped cylinder for the mouth. Or if you were needle felting a cat's head, the initial shape might just be an oval. So once you've felted your basic shapes, check them against your traced outline and look for any parts that may need building up, such as the purple area on the beagle's head. Take some more wool and roll it into a small cylinder and needle felt it around the oval shape to build up the profile so that it more closely matches your drawing. I use this technique adding more wool to make the body of the dog wider at the front and at the top of his back legs. I can't stress this enough, you need to refer to your image of your dog. In fact, while I was making this dog's head, I checked my felted head shape against the image a total of 21 times. This next tip is really important. If you've ever looked at your needle felted item and think, it doesn't look quite right, but I can't figure out why, then this will help you work out what part of the animal needs changing and by how much. You will have seen images of artists holding out their pencil while drawing. This isn't just a posy thing that artists do. They're actually measuring the size of what they're looking at and making sure their drawing has the same proportions. I keep saying that word proportions but what do I mean? Well as you can see with Brian the Beagle as I've decided to call him, the proportions are all wrong. His head's too big compared to the length of his body and his legs are too short which means he's constantly looking like he's sniffing the ground. <laughs> 
Of course, I've exaggerated this here, but even if your proportions are a bit off, it can make all the difference to your finished item. So say you're wanting to make a realistic dog. Here you can see I'm measuring the length of the dog's head from the tip of his nose to the back of his skull. So now I'm going to see how many times that width will go into the total width of the dog in the image. So as you can see, it's about two and a half times. So now if I do the same with my felted dog, measuring the head to see how many times it goes into the rest of the body to the furthest point I can see, it's pretty much about the same, about two and a half times, which means I've managed to get the head width in proportion to the rest of the body. You can do this for various parts of the animal you're creating, for example, checking that the legs are the right length in proportion to the body. If you prefer, you can use a ruler to work out the measurements using some maths. Eek! Don't panic, I'll walk you through it. On the image I'm referring to, I took measurements of the head width, H, and divided it by the body width, B, and I got 0 0.792. Then I measured my felted dog's head and divided that by its body width and got 0 0.55, a smaller number than the photo, so I knew that either my head was too narrow or the body was too wide. Looking at it, I was happy with the body width, so I worked out how wide the head should be in relation to the body by multiplying the ratio by the body width, which in this case was 0 0.792 times 20 16 7 inch, which gave almost 16 16 7 inch. In other words, one inch. Phew, I hope I haven't just bamboozled you with maths. Anyway, to fix this problem, I had another look at the image and noticed that it needed to be wider around the eyes. So I added two small cylinders of wool to at either side of the head, which gave it a more accurate width in proportion to its body. You can use this technique to compare various parts of your subject. This isn't just useful for realistic projects. I also used it when felting the cartoon style rabbit, making sure its nose was placed on the face in the right position. My final bonus tip is to keep practicing. The more you practice, the easier felting shapes will be. Can I just say thank you so much for all the lovely comments I've been receiving. And if you are struggling with an aspect of needle felting, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to address it. Once I've published the full tutorial on needle felting this beagle, I'll put the link here. And remember, there's no wrongly felted dogs, just different ones. Thanks for watching.